Daniel Ortega as a young revolutionary and a leader of the Sandinista rebellion. The Sandinistas fought during the 70s to wrest Nicaragua from US-backed dictator Anastasio Somoza. He had amassed great wealth whilst ruling through brutal security forces. I remember as a child of eight or nine years old playing baseball in the street, and the police arrived in their van, grabbed whoever they could, beat them, then took them away as prisoners. That forged in me a rebellious spirit, and a rebellious spirit will come out in some way. In this case, it came out in the revolutionary struggle. In 1979, the Sandinistas toppled Somoza, and within a broad coalition, quickly began mass literacy programs and redistribution of land. Ortega emerged as president. But the coalition wouldn't last, and civil war engulfed the country. When the dust finally settled in 1990, the Sandinistas declared free presidential elections. Ortega lost and began 16 years in opposition. This is where Daniel Ortega likes to position himself besides fellow revolutionaries and socialist leaders, Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro. But they're both gone from power while he has changed. The former Marxist revolutionary became a fervent Catholic, passing a stringent anti-abortion law in return for the church's support. In 2007, he allied with rightist former opponents to regain the presidency. He's held it ever since, despite widespread criticism of unfair elections. Under his combination of social programs and free market policies, the economy has grown substantially. The long-term opponent of capitalism says Nicaragua has to be pragmatic. We're making progress towards socialism. In what time frame? I couldn't say now. We're developing our programs, our projects, based on what our socio-economic reality is. We're calling for foreign investment, given that our country doesn't have the capacity or the right conditions to invest in a range of projects whose potential is clear to see. The reality is that we have to go to the main economic forces driving the world. Investors keep coming, partly because Nicaragua has mostly escaped the drug trafficking and violence that have rocked much of the region. But as his presidency has gone on, his family members have taken up positions of power. And many of those who before fought with him say he's turned into what he once struggled against. The Ortega of today is authoritarian, a dictator. He's robbed elections, he's got a machine of power for his family, and now he's collecting enormous private wealth. Basically, he's identical to the dictator Somoza. 67, the man himself says he has no thoughts of stepping down. The only thing that could stop me is death or incapacitation. That's why I say, as long as God keeps me life and health, I'll be fighting for the people. A reassuring message for his many supporters and a warning for those who fear his increasing grip on power. John Holman, CCTV, Managua.